Okay. All right. Well, I've been thinking about the water resistance rating on uh, these A1000s, and having had one apart, they have a, a full size O ring with uh, a four point screw down case back and a, uh, a stainless steel uh, case back and case that's you know well machined and the o-ring you know has like a full uh, you know uh, o-ring channel and you know all the the hallmarks of uh, of a case that's you know at least 10 bar water resistance rated so i i have a feeling this is a case of you know casio is known for underrating their uh their watches water resistance but i have a feeling like this is uh uh, even a more extreme case than like uh, an F91W, which is, you know, well known for being, you know, uh, at least like a uh, five bar water resistance rating. So I figured I would get out the pressure tester and uh, have a look here and uh, and also talk about what you're actually testing with one of these uh, testers. This is one that, you know, you'll, you'll see these uh, uh, online or on eBay and the process uh, is to uh, kit the watch in the chamber here and get everything uh, tightened down and then to pressurize this chamber to the the test pressure at, you're at for uh, three minutes and then to submerge the watch and depressurize the chamber and to watch for any streams of bubbles coming out of uh, in this case the the, the, the pushers or the case back, or if the kit watch had a stem, uh, the stem. So, um, but what that's actually testing is the uh, the chamber when it's pressurized. Uh, the inside of the watch case is at one atmosphere, and we've increased the pressure by one atmosphere, one bar. So uh, it's two bar in here. So if the watch uh, seals are able to resist that then the inside of the watch case will not be pressurized. And when you lower it into the water and depressurize the chamber, there will be no uh, release of air. Uh, but if the watch case seals have allowed uh, uh, air in, we'll see uh, air escaping. So that's basically uh, how these tests work. And we're coming up right on three minutes. All right, we'll lower this in and start to depressurize it. And we saw just a little bit of uh, air escaping uh, from here maybe, and uh, also some from the, uh, the top of the case back here maybe. So, um, although what you're usually looking for is like a stream of bubbles. So I think that um, at one bar, this uh, mostly resisted that. And, um, and then also uh, something about the this test is that um, what it's really testing is air uh, bypassing the seals which, uh, you know, air has a much lower viscosity than, uh, or a much, yeah, a much lower viscosity than water. It's 1 80th the viscosity. So uh, there's a, uh, a an, an equivalence where uh, about three bars of air pressure testing is equivalent to about 20 bar of water pressure testing. So, uh, that's why, you know, in the watch industry, these uh, these testers only go to like six bar, and why that's actually sufficient for pressure testing a watch that's rated to twenty bar. But we didn't see like a stream of bubbles coming out of the watch, so I think that constitutes a, a pass from this. We saw a little bit of. Uh, a bubble expanding here but you also see like you know the rest of the bubbles in the in the chamber here also get compressed 
and there's always some like uh, trapped bubbles on the case and in the the uh, the the pusher tubes so what that I think what we're seeing is actually just um, some trapped air outside of the case expanding what you see if air actually bypasses the seals is like a stream of bubbles and so I think I'll let this case all uh, dry off and uh, see how this does at a three bar to show you a uh, an actual uh, uh, failure of the test.